<laughs> Flav City family, what is up? DJ D Slav, your boy Flav City and Art in the house. Busy, busy day. We just finished cooking the last recipe for the cookbook and it came out so well. I said, let's fire up the live stream and cook it again because there's not enough food to go around for dinner. This is the remnants of a five ingredient chicken, veggie, and pesto bowl with out of sight flavor. We got one person here. Out right of sight. Now. What? What's wrong? There's one person here right now. Now there's four. <laughs> um, out of sight flavor, texture, all that good stuff. It's really, really easy to make. Did I set it as private by mistake? I don't think so. Oh, it's it is. It's private by mistake. It I is? Did, I did unlisted. Well, yeah. Oh, we got to do it again. How Whoops. are they all on here? There's 102 people on oh, here. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, man. Okay. Okay. I thought I did. Uh, but maybe it's not. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you got me nervous. It's not private. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Um, really, really tasty dish that utilizes a best-in-class Bobby-approved pesto from the store. There's actually a couple. This one's local. It's called Ga Gotham Greens here in Chicago. Um, but once you do that, you can use it two different ways and bang out a ton of flavor. Uh, it's a little later, but I want it to pop on live because it's Tuesday and this is such a yummy dish. And let me just show you what's so darn good about it. Look at this. First we have baby broccoli that's blistered in the cast iron pan. After we blistered the baby broccoli, we cooked a chicken breast in a really hot cast iron pan, the Flav City way, so it's crusty and juicy. Then we took some quinoa and lentils that were left over or from that packet. You can get these pre-cooked packets at the store. Warmed them up with water and pesto. Burst some cherry tomatoes in the oven and then did nice chicken there. I mean, come on. Amber Stover. That's the kind of food you want to eat. It's not keto or paleo because of the quinoa lentils, but it is very, very healthy, easy, tasty, and anti-inflammatory. Great, great stuff. So yeah, as you guys are rolling in, leave comments down below, please. Let us know where you're watching from. Say hello to the lady in black, D. Slav, my man Art holding the camera, and all that grand wow. stuff. Little Switzerland, North Carolina. That's Never heard of that. That's crazy. So the first thing we have to do is Jonathan Hill in blister the baby broccoli. I'm actually in love with baby broccoli. It's the softer side of broccoli. And because it's the softer side, you can actually eat the entire stalk and it's not unpleasant. That being said, I'm just going to take the very bottom part off here. Because they're unpleasant. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll have them, I'll quarter them. The whole point is just to create some surface area. Because when I get that cast iron pan, chug a lug duggin, it's going to create a lot of beautiful caramelized blackened flavor. Jill Chopsky in the house. What up, Jill? How's it going? In Michigan. Jill, I'm being followed by another Chopsky now. There's three Chopskys following me. On who's Instagram. the third one? Lauren Chopsky. Who's that? That's a question for you, Jill. <laughs> Jill, who's Lauren Chopsky? So we're going to have these. And then... I got my cast iron pan. Sharp Schreier in the house. Sharp from Michigan too, going back there. Once again, if you guys are just joining, we just finished another long day of cookbook photo shoots. This is the last recipe we made. I wanna redo it on a live stream now because it's so darn easy and tasty and we need more food for dinner. We're sure. making a five ingredient chicken and veggie pesto bowl. It's your oldest daughter. Ah, very nice. So a little bit of avocado oil goes in the pan. Now we're actually gonna get free flavor out of this because, all right, check it out. I'm using the same pan that I cooked already the, uh, the chicken in. So see all the fond in there? The culinary term for that is fond. I call them sticky bits. So I'm gonna put the broccoli straight away in there. And then I have a question for you guys. If I wanna caramelize this, or I should say blister it, blister in the sun, should I salt it now? Or salt it, <coughs> salt it later. Oh, I'm getting choked up well, talking let's about answer it. that after I tell you that Char <coughs> Troyer just gave a $9.99 super chat. Hey, Flav City family. Thank you so much, Char. I appreciate that. Now, obviously, we always talk about using Bobby approved store pot products if you're going to make semi homemade meals. A lot of pestos out there use sunflower oil, canola oil. Homie, don't play that game. We've talked about it many times. Those kind of oils are processed refined, inflammatory. They use chemicals to extract the oil and they're horrible, horrible for your health. I think a pesto should, let me, so I don't spill oil here, should have this oil in here, extra virgin olive oil. And you know what? This is a local Chicago company. Not everyone's gonna have it, but don't worry. In the cookbook, I always tell you what to look for at the grocery store. And I'm bummed out because the Costco, the old Costco pesto used to use EVOO. That was there yesterday. 
Now they're using sunflower oil. I was actually at Costco for three hours yesterday filming three videos by myself undercover with a hat and a mask on. It was super fun. Hey, Mari, I'm, I'm not Persian, but I have heard that mm. about my last name. Does it mean like Well, that's right. You told me about that. Something like that. Let me know what it means. I know it means something. I heard <clears> that. Um, Ray Farrell in the house. Yes, yeah, salt later. Great call by Pam, G. Michael, Zahara. I don't want to pull any moisture out now. So very, very important. No, I'm not losing my voice, Char. I just kind of got a little, a little bit clemped. I had that bite of uh, broccoli and started biting the back Zara of my throat. In the house. So yeah, we'll blister the broccoli. And Desi and Art just took a beautiful photo. And it's just amazing what you can do with five ingredients when you really know how to buy the best available products and ingredients to the store and how to utilize them. Because in addition to using the pesto in the um, quinoa and uh, lentils, I also make like a diluted olive oil to garnish on the chicken. Joe but Serrano. Joe Serrano in the house, nice. Did you feed Art? Yes. It's been a day with not that much food, but Art just crushed some of this. In case you didn't see it, this is what the final dish looks like when it's three quarters eaten right there. Check it out, Art. That's right, Dane. I'm the clemt. This chicken pesto bowl's making me the clemt. Talk amongst yourself. That's what it's gonna look about. See these burst tomatoes? These are beautiful cherry tomatoes. There's, oh, speaking of beautiful, the birthday girl, Rose Honey Parish. Who's one year old? Hello, my love bug. Who's one year old? Hey, who's hungry? <laughs> Do you say hi to everyone, Rose? Look, say hello. hi everyone. <laughs> How's she doing? It means diamond trader in yeah. Persian. My last name. Oh my god, that's I amazing. Like that. Almasi means diamond trader. That's cool. Thank you, Mario. So I'm gonna burst these cherry tomatoes in the mini oven down here. Or coming from diamond. Okay. Cool. It's like either one of those. Because it adds a nice element of texture and sweetness to the dish. Uh, there's a really cool company in Illinois called uh, Mighty Vine Tomato, and they grow tomatoes hydroponically all year long. And they're always really, really tasty. Um, but you want to buy high-quality cherry tomatoes. Look at the color. I ain't got no scrub. There's no white, you know, underripe tomatoes there. Those are fantastic. Cherry sweet on the vine. Are you waving? Oh, now she's waving. Hi. Hi, Rose Honey Bunny. Hi. Hi. You're, you're feeding now. That's why you got a little, huh? a little excited, huh, Rose? So I put this in the mini oven. I got it going at 450. Pretty Vin Diesel style, fast and furious. That's the rated G version of the name of that oven. That's right. That's the rated G version. Rated G. <laughs> um, and then earlier today, we made a five ingredients beef and veggie noodle stir fry. We took shirataki noodles. We took sugar snap peas green onions, the white and the green part, grass-fed uh, strip steak, and then garlic coconut aminos. Use the aminos for the steak marinade. Use the aminos as a stir-fry sauce. It was delicious. Hello. Amira in the house. So darn tasty. What's Rose eating there? A little veggie tabla? A little squash with some little pesto and some tomatoes. You got some pesto, Rose? She's not liking the tomatoes. Well, oh, really? That's a bummer. I've actually eaten them if they're... Are they raw or roasted? She had some like the roasted jammy ones? Wow, I'm shocked. Yeah, I know, me too. That's surprising. Mm. So actually I can show you. So Desi, here's what the, uh, check it out Art. This is what the dish looked like when Art and Desi just took a photo 20 minutes ago. Oh, right, beautiful. Get that nice, the beauty of having like really high quality grains like that is they're versatile. And I put them in a pan with a little splash of water and the uh, bone broth. Now in the book, I'll tell you how to buy good quality pre-cooked packets of lentils or like gluten-free grains. A lot of stores will have those, but uh, the Whole Foods today didn't have it, uh, but many, many stores have it. You can get a, um, a quinoa blend from Aldi. You can get brown rice and lentils at most stores, and those are very versatile because they're complex carbohydrates, they're pre-cooked, and allows you to make a 15-minute meal that's an Heavy on flavor, y'all. Amira, $1.99. Happy birthday, Rosita. Thank Lots you, Amira. Appreciate that. Hope all is well in Nueva York. Do you make your own pesto recipe that we can make? Did you watch the live stream on Friday? Yeah, we made that pesto, the homemade pesto with pine nuts and peely nuts. It was the bomb. Ash has a hashtag, Ask Desi. Are cooked berries okay for eight-month-old babies? Is this one okay? Cooked berries. Yeah, of course. Yep. 
Good to know. Yep, you're good to go, Ash. Just make sure they're organic because berries are always on the dirty dozen. Um, I have a couple pesto recipes in the first cookbook, or if you search Flav City Pesto on, uh, online, uh, you'll find a couple on the blog. Spin drift art? Right? Yes, please. Uh, there okay. you go, homie. I'm going to do lemon also. What I always do with it. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I got the water going. Oh. <laughs> I need the instant replay. Who got there first? Hoorah! Okay. Now, I'm going to start pounding the chicken breast. Which is, oh, which a is little better, thinner. Which is better in a jam, sorbitol or malitol, if you had to choose? Oof. Gosh. N neither? You really don't want to eat any of those. They're, watch my jam and jelly review from a few weeks ago. You don't want any of those. Those are bad news. So I have a beautiful organic chicken breast at room temperature. Now, we're lucky enough to have the number one ranking chicken breast video on YouTube, which is crazy to me. And the key to making a juicy, evenly cooked one is pounding it a bit thin. So what I'm going to do is do that right now. But this is getting a little uh, charred on the... Uh, Sheet tray there. Char or char? You know, it's not getting charred, Troy. It's getting charred. The thing is, sometimes you can buy chicken breasts these days, usually conventional, that are ginormous. Those are pumped full of GMO, and they're hybrid now to be monster. The organic ones tend to be smaller, but they're still a bit uneven. So I like to take my meat mallet here, and I want to make sure it stays on the wooden should, board. Instead of the sorbitol and malitol, should I go for regular sugar instead? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, the sheet tray. The sheet tray, the sugar from the tomatoes. So there we go. All right, that's nice and flat. It just, that really all it takes, you guys. It's a game changer in terms of making the chicken breast so much more even to cook. And then I'll take it, put it here, and I'll just wait to put it in the cast iron pan. I was going to see if I could really annoy somebody and say, like, uh, Game Changer is literally the most overused. <laughs> I, so I'm going to swap out sheet trays because the previous sugar from the tomatoes there is, is juicing. And it's uh, getting a little too caramelized. Well, happy early birthday to you, G. Michelle Jr. Happy belated birthday, Rose. I'm a Gemini baby myself. Well far from being a baby now. Three more days. Uh, we need a new situation here with this, uh, that drawer with the sheet trays. It's a freaking mess, man. Okay, now we'll take our tomatoes. There we go. We'll put it there. They're already seasoned. Let's do one if more drizzle. Tomacos, could you use those instead? Tomacos would be Homer Simpson Cherry and Bobby tomacos. approved. Love, Tina. 89, $4.99. Love you guys. Will you be dropping a baby slash toddler cook? You know what? I think we will probably next year, but an ebook with like 20 easy recipes. I don't think it's something that would be a, <clears throat> a traditional printed book, but um, yeah, we have so many good ideas. I just uh, want to do it. How high is your heat over there? It's actually at medium. medium. You don't want to have too high a heat here because the goal, just like we're doing the uh, blistered asparagus, is to blister them, but not burn them or make sure they're uncooked in the middle. And you have some oil in there? Yeah, there's avocado oil in there. Correct. Well, I'm buzzing away here. So look, I have this thing here. I've been wearing the last couple days. It's a posture corrector. And it buzzes me every time I slouch forward. So I sent it, I set it to the strict uh, mode. So anytime I go like past here, it'll buzz me after like 10 seconds. So when I'm cooking, it's hard. Because imagine chopping like this, but I'll get buzzed. By doing this, so I really have to start shopping like that. But ultimately, I think it's going to be good for me. But it's Thanks, really Ray. crazy. Appreciate you watching, man. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't done so yet, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching. Thoughts on eating a pure carnivore diet, nose to tail. Yeah, Christian, I'm all about that. You've got to uh, bring in some vegetables, too. But it's got to be a pasture-raised grass-fed, wild-caught, nose-to-tail. That's the most important thing. It's basically the paleo diet done clean with cooking with ghee, avocado oil, and grass-fed beef. Allison Painter, $4.99. Just starting keto and love how you've taught me to read labels. Thanks, Bunch. Oh, you're welcome. Because, uh, Allison, it's all about clean keto for us. Z-Man saying, where did you get the posture buzzer? Uh, 
Upright Go on Amazon. Upright Go 2. It's like uh, 90 bucks or something like that, but hey, I'm liking it so and far. Christian Torres says, right. there's no such thing as perfect posture. In parentheses, I'm a physical therapist. Well, yeah, I shouldn't say perfect. I just don't want to slouch. I've noticed lately I've been slouching forward, so a little electronic buzz to maintain my posture could help. Look at this beautiful. If you haven't seen, this is what the final dish looks like after it's been picked over. But look how saucy, the lentils. These lentils and quinoa in this bowl just get heated up with the water and a really good store-bought pesto turn into that. The tomatoes turn into that jammy tomato. The broccoli turns into that. And the chicken. Oh. Madeline Chopsky said, I'm vegetarian but love learning all things cooking. It's all about cooking. Even though I'm teaching you a principle about a chicken breast, you can apply that to a cauliflower steak. It's all the same, Madeline. Shout out to Festimo out there in Chicago Ridge. Nice. Okay, now check this out. I'll come back here. Are lentils keto? No, they're not keto or paleo. This book is not strictly keto or paleo. Even though a lot of recipes will be, it's about healthy, simple eating, using the best in class Bobby approved products at the store with a few fresh ingredients. Yes, we've been to Europe. Now look at that. We got some nice color on the brock, so now we add the salt. So I don't want to pull out too much moisture early. And then we'll cook it another two minutes, then I'll drop the, uh, the chicken in the, in, the same, <laughs> in the same pan there. Bobby, have you been to Croatia? Yes, I went to uh, Dubrovnik about 12 years ago. Really, really fun. What else is going on here? Uh, that's about it, here, come here. Let's show the picture from earlier. So. If you didn't see, this is what the final uh, dish for the chicken pesto bowl looks like. Beautiful, right? Saucy lentils and all that stuff. Then, let's show the previous dish. Any plans for a paleo cookbook? Uh, no, not strictly paleo. This is keto. These are shirataki noodle stir fry with grass-fed beef, blistered snap peas, and coconut aminos that are garlic flavored. Olivia from Berlin, good to Look at that. Oven. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Isn't that beautiful? Really, really tasty. Just five ingredients. Really crazy stuff. Humble park in the house. Abraham Jimenez, nice. welcome. I'm really Jimenez. enjoying these flavored coconut aminos. And they're on sale right now at uh, Whole Foods, but this was my stir fry sauce and my marinade for that uh, stir fry. This is coconut aminos. On their own, they don't have enough flavor for me. But the garlic flavored one with real best in class ingredients that's keto approved, unbelievable. And the teriyaki one too is fantastic. So when I can use a store-bought sauce as one of my ingredients and use it for a marinade and the stir-fry sauce, winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. That's Gina Beto in the house with $2 super chat. Gina. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina. All right, y'all, these are done. Let's take the brocks. Where do you get aminos? Uh, Whole Foods, get that brand, Coconut Secret. Secret. <laughs> it's a secret, don't tell anyone. But get the flavored ones. The garlic one and the teriyaki one is honestly life-changing. It's Zakia so good. wants a shout out from uh, North Side of Chicago. Zakia, Zakia. Is a, vegan, a vegan kid. Nice, Zakia from the North Side. Hilarious and informative. Sounds like she's a neighbor. Thank you for watching. Big shout out to you. Now, before I put the chicken in that pan, I do have to wipe it out. Art, it where did Bobby find the Primal Kitchen tartar sauce? Uh, Whole Foods. Or go on Primal Kitchen website and get it. It's a relatively new product, but I'm going to talk about that in the cookbook because I have a recipe for five ingredient keto salmon cakes and you can't make a tartar sauce when you only have five ingredients plus salmon. It's a next level game changer of a product. Hey Flame City, I'm a 12 year old boy who used to weigh 125 at age nine. I followed yours and Thomas Glower's advice along with little keto intermittent fasting. I'm now 85 pounds and feeling great. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. Thomas is the man. I got the recipes for you. He's got the food science. Love to hear that, my Jim man. Chopsky, what about that <laughs> bourbon from Friday brand? That was... Uh, oh, Whiskey Acres. Whiskey Acres. Yeah, that's DeKalb, good stuff. Illinois, right? Uh-huh. All right, look how much salt I'm putting on my chicken breast. Oh, my gosh. You're going to kill us, dude. <laughs> Some people would see that and be like, that's, that's crazy, right? That's, uh, that's too much salt, Bobby. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm not crazy. saying that. Other people are saying that. That's high blood pressure city. It's not. People it's a bland TV chicken breast. Something's going to stick to the pan. Speaking of the pan. Now I'm going to crank my Smoking, heat up man. a little more. I'm going to put it in away from me. When it goes in the pan, I'm going to push it down. And then I'm going to wash my hand real quick. And then I'm going to season the other side. Everybody's in the kitchen. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you can see what I'm dodging here, it's crazy. Hi from Naperville. Welcome now, to Naperville. Here's the key to a chicken breast. We already pounded it thin in case you didn't see that. The cleaning tip is to use a splatter guard, but I will only flip that one time because I want a nice sear to be, uh, form on there. If you get in there and start fidgeting, it's never gonna get that nice sear. I'm gonna let it go for probably four minutes. Sarah, when flip you it, too much salt? Turn, the heel, turn the heat down and then go probably two more minutes, but I gotta make sure I don't burn my splatter guard in the meantime. Sarah, it's not too much salt, trust me. I'm, trust me. I'm born May 22nd, I know this. Trust me, Sarah. I'm just trying to make sure my splatter guard doesn't burn here, which is, I don't know why it's burning, that's weird. So Dang, that is keep in mind that chicken breast are incredibly, huh, this is weird, it keeps burning, incredibly bland. And if you don't salt it properly, it will have no flavor. There's no fat in chicken breast. It's like 98% uh, fat free. This is so weird, there's no flame hitting this. I wonder if the edges of the pan are so hot, it's like burning the, what if I go like this side, let's see. Oh, that's interesting, look at that. All right, no, it's still burning. Oh yeah, I guess we're not using a splatter guard. That's weird. Okay, so yeah, salt aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. Hey, that's what I have to say. Sarah's making your turkey cheeseburger from your cookbook tonight. Oh, nice, Sarah. Check this out, Sarah. My cherry tomatoes are bursting. They're so happy to see you. They're bursting at the seams. That's good stuff. Now, I'll start preheating this pan over here. Whenever I use my splatter guard, I have oil that like collects on the side of it and drips all over my countertop. It's like, I'd rather not use a splatter guard. Um, yeah, that's have, happened like, in the past. Pools of grease. You have the same one I have? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I've had mine in a while, I don't know. Now, you know sometimes, guys, you can go to the store, like I said, you can buy these beautiful pre-cooked packets of like lentils and quinoa and brown rice. That's what the basis of the recipe is. They were sold out today at the store, so I had to make my own. That's organic lentils and quinoa. I'm gonna warm it up. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. And then I'm gonna add pesto. Festi Mo, you can go on to Bobby's Amazon store and order those oven gloves from there. Yeah, although, yeah, I have a different pair on there. Uh, Cause mine, mine started to wear out a little bit. Yeah, they're not that protective anymore. They're kind of a bummer. Yeah, amazon.com slash shop slash Flav City has everything. Now I take my beautiful pesto store-bought one with extra virgin olive oil. I know a big Flav City fan, Rob, from Idaho, told me that Costco has an extra virgin olive oil one, but I went yesterday, and it wasn't. It was sunflower oil, so I think they changed the recipe. And that's it. You just warm it up. You make it kind of swussy, and uh, that's it. Now, the thing is, guys, I was at Costco yesterday in... The suburbs. I, I drove far away so I can uh, do my work undisturbed by the local Costco where they know me too well. I was there for three hours. I filmed three videos. I filmed a Costco summer haul, Costco bread review, and a Costco supplement video. I did all three videos back to back, like two hours of straight filming. I went to turn off my microphone. I never turned it on in the first place. I had a panic attack. Luckily, because I was filming the video selfie style, the audio is fine. Because if Art would have been there holding the camera five feet away, I would have been wrecked. If Art was there, he would have made that sure. Have happened, yeah, it's yeah. a really good point. But I have to go undercover style because if we're filming normal, we'll get in trouble there. <coughs> so check it out. I need this a little saucier, so I'll put some more water. I'm going to put all of this pesto in here. Bobby, did you make a Marilyn Manson reference a few minutes ago? No, I didn't. Somebody is asking. I might have mistakenly did it. Yeah, so that goes in there. I need yeah, a little more which water. Which reference are you referring to? Let's fill up the water jug here. People. So things are going well. It's just I wanted to do a couple recipes in the book with pesto because it's such a great flavor. And not as just used for a condiment. It can be used as the basis of like a side dish. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Laura is saying thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Laura, I appreciate that. Jesse, say hi to everyone if you haven't done so yet. Hello, everyone. Suzanne's Rose. dinner. Should I <laughs> scramble some? He's saying hi, Rose. Hi, Rose. She's waving hi to you, Art. Hi, Rose. Hi. Who's one year old? Who's one year old? You are. Suzanne is eating an Amy's burrito with siete red enchilada sauce on top, siete nacho chips, and crushed avocado. Is oh, my God. See, that right there, Amy, is like the best store-bought meal you can do. 
that's the best. And that's why I kind of got the idea to do this book where, hey, I want to make homemade fresh meals, but with five ingredients. And usually one of those ingredients will have a store-bought best-in-class product, like an Amy's, like a really good olive oil-based uh, pesto. Because look, all right, get in here if you can. Look inside this. How beautiful. We just took bland lentils and quinoa and we just transformed it. Now, if you have an extra ingredient like bone broth, which I don't have for this recipe because that would be a sixth ingredient, that'd be even better, but you don't even need it to be honest. What brand of pesto is this? So this is local to Chicago. It's called Gotham Greens. Um, but if you're going to buy a pesto around you, make sure they use extra virgin olive oil. If they don't, it's got to be at least expeller pressed organic sunflower or uh, canola, but it's got to be expeller pressed. How much is that? This is a little pricey. This was... Uh, I want to say six or seven bucks. A little pricey. Okay. All right. Check it out. Happy birthday to you. Normally you can on. tell a chicken breast is ready to flip when it's a little opaque around the side. Yeah. Come on. Give me some love. I want to see the thumbs up go to 125 right now. When you leave a chicken breast alone, walk away, Art. Don't touch it. Don't hurt the chicken breast. It forms a beautiful crust. Now, Look what I just did. I dropped the heat down to medium low. I want to gently finish cooking it through. Happy early birthday to you, Laura. Now, I have to check for seasoning because my lentils and quinoa were completely unseasoned. Just because I put the pesto in doesn't mean it's not seasoning. And it's not. It's bland. But when you buy those packets of uh, pre-cooked lentils, they often are seasoned. You know who has a great version of that is Aldi. They have these pre-cooked packets of like quinoa and brown rice and lentils. They also have at some of these a uh, cauliflower rice packet. So if you wanted to make this keto, cauliflower rice that. It'd be amazing. Hannah said that that is Crust Nation. Hashtag Crust Nation, Hannah. Well said. Big love to you. Look at this cuteness going on down here. OMG, Rose. OMG. Can you be any cuter? Huh? Do you have a little snack there of what? Pears? Yeah. They're in Ah. Very, very cute, Rose. You are uh, the cutest. Mm, yum. That's good. That's good fat there, Rose. All right. Paleo snack, my love. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's dance. Happy dance. Happy dance. Happy dance. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right, how's our tomatoes going down here, RDO? These look grand. So if I just poke them, oh yeah. Those are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So just let them keep going. What brand of pan are you using for the chicken? That is a beautiful French stove pan. So I have two kinds of pans, both on my Flav City Amazon shop. These are French. This is, a, I think, a $180 pan. Or you can use the large one, which costs $35. The beautiful thing about this, if you want to splurge, is that it's not just beautiful and enameled on the outside. It's actually enameled on the inside. So essentially, it's also nonstick, but with enamel, not nonstick coating. So it's very easy to clean. Zakia, hey, hashtag tell art. We were at the neighborhood market Walmart on March 14th this year, and we were there the same day you all were. I was, oh, we missed them. Anyways, haha, ha, art uh -huh. has me saying OMG. That is so funny. What's Ongi? That was a long time ago now. March 14th. Yeah, bro. Uh, that, yes, it was. A few days before quarantine. Quarantine. Drinking whiskey like that. <laughs> All right. These are done. Look how yummy those look, you guys. Saucy lentils and <laughs> quinoa with pesto. I mean, that's what you want to eat. Like I said, is it keto or paleo? No. But is it a nutrient-dense anti-inflammatory meal with loads of fiber and protein? Heck yeah. Mm, insane flavor. Wow. So go to Bobby's Amazon page. He's got the uh, stove cast iron. I got it here. all there for you, girl. Delicious. Now let's just kill the heat on the meters. Take them out. Once again, if you live in Chicago, look for Mighty Vine tomatoes. Look at those. They're just gorge. Jill Chopsky, $15. Have you reviewed Go Macro Bars? Um, um, love this five ingredient idea. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jill. And thank you for the super chat. You're so sweet from Michigan. Yes, I have. And unfortunately, they all have natural flavors. Um, if you go to the uh, 
protein bar section of like a Whole Foods, the best ones for me would be like uh, Bulletproof, Thunderbird, um, Lara Bar and Lara Bar Protein are great. If I see natural flavors in one of those things, the like Garden of Life makes a really nice one but it has natural flavors, it's a hard no dog. Um, so yeah, you just gotta look out for that. What's another really good one I'm thinking about? Uh, obviously Epic makes a great a meat bar. They also make fruit bars too. Um, oh, Pure the Elizabeth now has a brand new uh, grain-free uh, energy bar. Delicious too. Melinda what are Whitlock, you doing? ten dollars super chat. Good news. First fever-free day of COVID nineteen. Feeling better. Thanks for streaming. I've really helped. It's really helped during recovery. Thanks for all the love from love my city family. Love to hear I'm that. Happy you're starting to get better, Melinda. Get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. She loved COVID. Love it. Have you seen What the Health says Rose? Yes, we have Rose. Which Maggie one was B. What the Health? That was Maggie uh, B in the house. What the health is yeah, don't eat that, Rosie. Yeah, what the hell we've seen. Happy girl, $5 super chat. Just received your cookbook. It's beautifully put together. So informative and helpful. Love you guys. Thank you so much, happy girl. Just posting the pan in the chat in case anyone else wants to know. So, thank you for that, KS Durant. This, I have two. I have, a, I believe this is a 10 inch and I have a 12 inch. So my chicken's done, you guys. Mindy, I'm wearing my Patriot shirt. Kill today. the heat. Crust is beautiful. Grunt style. Now. Art, why is it important to let this rest for a good four to five minutes? If you cut into it right now, the juices are just going to fall out of it. Yeah. It will literally stream out like a pool of tears coming out of my someone's chicken, eyes. And nobody wants yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, listen, it already is a chicken breast. It's on the dry side because there's no fat. Number one, if you cook it too high or too long, it's dry. If you don't pound it thin like I showed you, it'll dry because it'll cook unevenly. And if you cut into it too soon, the juices will stream out like a river. If you want the recipe for the best ever chicken uh, breast recipe, just go on uh, YouTube or Google, search Flav City Chicken Breast. Or if you want a fun thing, go on Google, how to cook chicken breast. My video comes up number one ahead of Jamie Oliver, Bon Appetit, and Gordon Ramsay. How crazy is that? Felina Nacheva says, Bobby is getting skinnier every day during quarantine. <laughs> After all that eating and the haircut makes him look even younger. Wow, Benjamin Buttoning. Ben hashtag Benjamin Buttoning, yeah. I actually did lose a good six pound during quarantine. Uh, maybe once I get back to the gym and start pounding more of those uh, protein shakes, it'll help. So dinner's done. Do I eat peas, Bobby? I eat sugar snap peas. Regular peas, not too much. I love sugar snap peas. Uh, where does Bobby get his t-shirts? Uh, normally I get them at Bad Pickle t-shirts. I got a couple new ones at Flavor Gallery. And uh, yeah, this is new. This is actually, these are clothes from a company called Rhone, R-H-O-N-E. Uh, they make like men's version of Lululemon and it's really comfortable. Most comfortable thing ever, I'm not going to show you, but my underwear. I got a couple pairs of Tommy John underwear after seeing their advertisements everywhere. Yeah. Guys, and I guess they make girl stuff too. Amazing. I'm going to see if they can somehow do a collaboration with us. The most comfortable, supportive, but you can't even tell you're wearing boxers ever. They're crazy. Okay, let's see here. Bobby approved probiotics. Yeah. Ancient Nutrition makes a really good one. Primal Kitchen makes a really good one. Uh, to think what else. Ancient Nutrition is pretty good at the chill chest at uh, Whole Foods. Thank you, Zahar. It's a healthy addiction. Somebody's asking about a P.O. box to send a birthday gift to Rose. Uh, KF, email me, bobby at flavcity.com, and I'll give you the address. I actually don't have a, an email address or a P.O. box. I just give people my dad's address because he has a doorman in his building, and I figure it's safer though. <laughs> than having people send stuff directly to me. Uh, let's see, Peter, no. Right, Mindy. What happened, Sweet Pea? Pa Patria. Sweet, oh. Style. Good company. Let's see here. Guten Abend, Ben. Park yeah, Hall. Jill, I'm all about mel melatonin. Just make sure it's pure melatonin. Uh, that'll help you sleep for sure. How can we send a gift to Rose? Uh, Email me once again, bobby at flavcity.com. I'll give you the address that you can either send an Amazon gift. That's very kind of you. I've gotten actually a handful of fans doing that. You and always promote sweet. collagen. Are there any vegan, vegetarian alternatives? There is, yeah. If you look at my uh, best supplements for 2020 video, uh, there's a plant-based vegan one by Sun Warrior. Sun Warrior makes it. It's really good. Really good. Yeah, Art lost weight too. He's been running a lot. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get a plate uh, back here. I want to get a big plate family style to plate this up. Don't have internet down there, so I'm not going to... No, you don't it. need to come down here. 
Let's see what Rose is up to while we wait for Bobby. First of all, guys, how insanely easy was this dinner? I mean, we're talking about a 15-minute meal. It's bazonkers how easy it is. Best almond milks. Uh, the best almond, actually, the best almond milk out there for the cleanest is from Malk or Three Trees, the same company that makes this oat milk. Is there any vitamin R in there? There's no vitamin R, but Malk, all their nut milks and oat milks are oil-free, meaning there's no emulsifiers, there's no guar gums, and they're actually using Himalayan pink salt. So they're using a ton more oats or almonds and no emulsifiers. Really good stuff. Our friend Arwen from Glastonbury is watching. Welcome. But to be honest, I don't buy that very often. I don't drink almond milk. I use it for my smoothies. So I'll just buy the organic, unsweetened, plain version. The 365 brand is actually a very good deal. That's what I use for my smoothies every day. I shouldn't say every day because I haven't been doing them as much now because of uh, not working out as much. Greetings to you, Maria from Austin. Great city. I need to get back there. All right. So we have our swoo. <laughs> we have our saucy... Uh, Lentils and quinoa here. Have cooked it in a saucier. <laughs> I got Rose peeking over there. Hey, Rose. Hi. Are you hungry, Rosa? <laughs> Hi. That's very sweet of you. Okay, so. <laughs> I agree, Rose. <laughs> okay. Then we take our beautiful. We got blistered. Thanks, Let me know man. why I blister broccoli in my pan. Why is Let your me know mouth why. open in your thumbnails? Uh, I don't know. It's like one of those like fun things. Just be like, whoa, I'm trying to tell you how excited I am. Whoa. They have a uh, version of Oatly in the UK, which is the same. Water, oats, and Himalayan salt. Delicious. <laughs> oh, a version of uh, Malk, you mean? Yeah. Uh, that's nice. All right, so we take that. And we take our beautiful blistered. Look at those. Looks like a shrunken prune or george costanza would say shrinkage tell me to eat a plum <laughs> pluck those everywhere can you do an egg segment i need some variation lol <laughs> uh we have a great egg salad recipe scrambled egg recipe frittata all that good stuff maggie then, Miro, wow 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 yes well said maggie <laughs> i was in the pool she also said that <laughs> someone said that maggie Miro wrote that all right now look at this our chicken breast maggie is Bring her up here. Come here, Rose. Come here. Get your tickets up here. <laughs> get over here. Get that. Put them up here, huh? Ah. All right. Check this out. Cars that are Bobby approved. Uh, but uh, you know, I haven't looked into that. A lot of them have really bad added ingredients. Like the one at Costco has uh, food coloring and maltodextrin and a bunch of crud in there. You guys, that's how you cook a chicken breast. Look at that. Absolutely streaming down with juices. And one of my favorite pieces is like this, like all that beautiful caramelized goodness there. Hey, Rose, look at this. Is that chicken breast? That's how we cook chicken. Juicy. Jugoso. Then we'll take our knife. We'll just go right here. Okay. I should have plated the one for the uh, book, too. <laughs> you should have. This looks really nice, actually. <laughs> take it back to the studio. And then we'll take some really good. Extra virgin olive oil. I've dropped this cap every time I've taken it off here. Better what? than dropping other things. <laughs> True. And then, just for... Hint, hint. Shites and giggles, yeah. You'll see what Art's talking about in the uh, Costco video this week. I had an epic fail yesterday. I'm going to take <laughs> yeah, a little... Rose is shaking her hand at you for doing that. Pesto. Guys, there it is. Five ingredient chicken and veggie pesto bowl. Who? I ask you, who doesn't want to eat that for dinner? Rose, do you know anyone in your life? Who wouldn't want to eat that? That's full of uh, nutrients, fiber, protein. That's the kind of stuff you want. That's absolutely delicious food, Rose. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. Spoiler alert, we tried it already. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much the same presentation. You, you made it in, what, 20 minutes? Less. Hey, when you're making your guac, how long do you keep your your onions in the uh, lime juice? 15 to 30 minutes. What's the longest you go? Yeah, uh, two hours. How long have we been on right now, Art? Uh, 39 minutes. 39, but a lot of talking. You can do this dinner in, honestly, 20 minutes. No, no joke at all. Rose is right. Okay, Rose, here, I'm going to give you a bite. You Thanks. tell me, Rose. Joe Serrano, I agree. Okay, Rose, here you go. Here's a nice bite. It's darn tasty. 
Here's some chicken for you. Uh, Barry Obama says it needs tobacco. <laughs> I mean, Tabasco, sorry. No, no Tabasco for this one. Here, Rose, try this. You don't want chicken? Look. She doesn't know it's chicken. Mmm. Here, right, sweetie. Oh, ho, ho, that chicken's good, mama. I'm getting buzzed on the back for bending over. There you go, Rosie. Wow, she says no, huh? Did she eat it? Mm -hmm. No. All right, let me try this. So I want a bite. How can that be turned keto? I use cauliflower rice. That's the best way to do it. Is that the solution to anything to make keto? <laughs> yes. Cauliflower rice? Look at that. Mm. Oh my God. The flavor? I already tried it, guys. It's delicious. Honestly, guys? So good. Blows me away. So much flavor. So much flavor. And you need that salt on the chicken, whoever's yes, asking. That's you. right. Otherwise... Chicken, seasoned, juicy, perfectly crusted. The lentils are so darn creamy and nice and seasoned because of the pesto. Let me try this blistered, juicy tomato. The blistered tomato is my favorite. It's crazy. <coughs> Fa family style. Make two, three chicken breast rows. Pile it up there. Oh my gosh. I'm going to take another bite with my clean fork. Yeah, Brad, we've been wondering, where are you? Partham, where have you been? the live stream? Parham, you missed. Look at this goodness. A five ingredient chicken and veggie pesto bowl. What's going on in Atlanta that's better than this that you chose mm. to watch that? Wow. So darn good. Mm. Want to try that? Yes, please. Go over here. Oh my God. You guys come out even better than I expect. And this is one of them. Hi, sweetie. Okay. I already know it's good because I had some earlier. <laughs> Love perfectly, it. perfectly seasoned, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. See, guys, when you have five ingredients, you have to season everything perfectly and aggressively. You have to learn how to multitask and make one ingredient go two different ways. That's what it's all about. So, lovely time. Rose, you're lovely too. Right, Rose? Okay, guys. We want to eat this while it's still hot. Amazing time. I'm super glad we popped on. We'll be back on Thursday and Friday. Got lots more work to do. Lots of videos to make. We never stop around here. Go, 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 go. And we love doing it all for you. Uh, for Rose Honey, the love of my life. For GJG Slav, all the way from the, B, uh, from the BG. DJ Slav? <laughs> yeah, major love. From Art, from me. We leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace. peace. Bye, Rose. Can we wave? Ah, oh, you're waving. You're the cutest baby ever. Ah.